if they don't tick these three boxes, don't sign them. If you don't settle for mediocrity, then you'll get yourself an improvement on what you have now. Yes, yes, people, what is good? Welcome back to my channel. It's Tapping Tobes here, back with another upload. Thanks for the love recently on the upload I did with Big Steve as well. Appreciate that. Listen, people have been getting onto me in the comments, so I said, you know what, let me continue some small momentum and actually start putting in some of these uploads that I said I'd do on topics that I just felt like I needed to speak about. And today, let's get straight into it. Of course, if you don't live under a rock, you will have heard that uh, Antonio Nusa is on his way to Brentford. They have agreed a deal for similar terms to Spurs. Sorry, I got my notes here. Let me read my notes. Similar terms to Spurs in excess of 30 million euros. And he will stay at Club Bruges for the rest of the season before joining permanently in the summer. So he's off to Brentford. Um, obviously, a lot of noise on Twitter. Oh, Spurs had their chain snatched. How are Spurs fumbling? Rare tear tear, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So I just wanted to debunk this as well because I, I feel like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge critic when it comes to Tottenham and when it comes to our ownership, when it comes to our recruitment and stuff, right? So... I'd like to think that I'm somewhat balanced. Sometimes I lose my head, but for the most part, I'm balanced. And I'm scratching my head as to why there's so much anger at Spurs or why Spurs are getting clowned for this. If we look at the reasons as to how he's ended up joining Brentford over Spurs, and I quote from Alistair Gold, he spoke on first team football assurances that Brentford guaranteed him, right? Which Spurs could not. Right? Nusa, I think he's played what? Like, I can't remember how many matches he's played for Club Bruges. I don't really watch Nusa. I barely watched him. I know of his talent level. I know he's talented, but this is an 18-year-old kid. Very talented 18-year-old kid, according to reports, according to a lot of the people I speak to, but he's a kid. So him coming into a team that have around what, six odd attackers at this point in time, one who will be going potentially in the summer because he's on a loan deal. I think it's very difficult to just guarantee that he will play um, most weeks. It's hard to guarantee that. And Brentford made that guarantee. Brentford made that guarantee and they're in a better position to make that guarantee because they don't have as many players vying for an attacking spot as we do, right? So I don't really get how that equates to Spurs fumbling. Now, you can look at it two ways. I think you should really look at it two ways. One way is whilst he's extremely talented, He's quite young and it's quite difficult to guarantee an 18-year-old as much football as he wants. Spurs can't make that guarantee. Currently, Spurs are playing Sun Young Min at left wing. Currently, they're playing Richarlison up top. Currently, when everyone's fit, Kulisewski plays right wing. It's very difficult for Ange or whoever it is behind the scenes to say, you know what, Nusa, you're playing guaranteed next season. And we all know what we want as fans. Yeah, we know that Richarlison's not good enough to be starting regularly for Spurs, but he's found a groove. It's very difficult for Ange Postecoglou to say, you know what, Nusa, no, you're going to play regularly every game next season. It's difficult. And that's with the starting players. I forgot about all the mid that we have in our team, which I'll get onto in the second viewpoint, right? So the point I'm making is it's difficult for Spurs to offer this guy a guaranteed place in the starting eleven for most weeks next season. It's hard, even though we are searching for that winger who will eventually become that player who plays most weeks for Spurs. I don't think that's something that we can guarantee to Nusa at the stage of his career that he's in right now, an 18-year-old. I don't think we can offer that to him right now. If he was 22, 23, 24 and had um, a, a bigger portfolio in Europe, then potentially, yeah. But right now, I think it's hard to guarantee him that. So that's one side you can look at. On the other side, you can look at the fact that we've annoyingly stockpiled our team with too much mediocrity. And this is the problem that I had with our attack throughout the summer and I've had with our attack all season, right? Individually, I don't think these guys are like terrible, terrible players, but there are at least three players you can say off the bat, they're not really good enough for Spurs. Not bad, but they're not really good enough for Spurs. Yeah? And... Maybe if we didn't stop our team with so much mid, right? Maybe Nusa would have looked at it as, you know what, fine. These guys can't guarantee that I'm playing week in, week out. But my pathway to first team football is not too difficult. 
it's not too difficult, right? Son is getting on now. He's going to play central. So maybe I can target that left wing because then my competition is between me and Richarlison. I'll back myself with Richarlison or I'll back myself with Solomon. But no, right? If Nusa was to join next summer, he'd have to be competing with Son, who's, who, who was still having to use in that role because we've got Richarlison up top, or Richarlison in that role, or Solomon in that role. That's three players, potentially, that he has to compete with in his favoured position, right? And then on the right-hand side, we've got Kulisevsky and Brennan Johnson. This was my main issue with the attack. When you bring in too much mediocrity, right, it reduces the, the actual space in your squad to sign these talented players. This is why I was so keen on making sure that Spurs sign a higher calibre talent than Brennan Johnson in the summer. This is why, even though he was free, even though, because I remember doing a video on him, he's free, it's whatever, like, it's not the end of the world, but he's mid as well, Solomon. Solomon, yeah, it's squad depth, but does it really improve our squad? It's a sideways signing to replace Lucas Moura, right? So this is, this is the, second, the, the second viewpoint. You stockpile your team with so much mid that, it reduces the space you can offer to the actual game changers. You look at our attack right now, we've got Werner, Johnson, Richarlison, Son, Solomon, Kulisewski. Only Son is the real game changer in that attack. And then the next best player is Kulisewski, who's a good player, but he's not like an elite player. He's not like an otherworldly player, especially when he plays on the right. He needed someone to come in and give him a kick up the backside give him actual competition, and we still don't really have that, right? So I can honestly see it from that point of view as well. And I think the attack, the attack is honestly an area of our team that we really, really need to zero in and do serious surgery on in the summer, right? If not this January, because I can't see Spurs signing an attacker, the, the attacker that we want or we'd like, this signing um, this January. I can't see that. I cannot see it. Unfortunately, I can't see it. Because we've already signed Timo Werner, who a lot of people are telling me X, Y, Z. We've already signed Timo Werner. So we have Timo Werner, Solomon, Son, Richarlison, Kulisewski, Johnson. That's six attackers with no European football, with no FA Cup. Let's be real. Spurs are not signing another attacker to come into this team in January. It's not happening. And I haven't made my peace with it. I'm still frustrated. I'm still frustrated. I still think that that attack is too mediocre. It's not good enough, right? But back on Nusa and the whole conundrum of our attack, ultimately, Nusa doesn't really have enough skin in the game for Spurs to be making those guarantees to him on any position right now. And really and truly, as talented as he is, Spurs have the money, have the resources, to go out and sign an alternative. If it's not Nusa, give us an alternative then, right? That's when people should be angry. Don't lose your sleep over Nusa, as talented as he is, yeah? Be angry if Spurs say, okay, cool, we're not gonna sign another talented attacker in the summer. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna commit big money and big thinking, big resources. We're not gonna prioritize getting, getting good or higher caliber players to this team. That's when I'll be upset. I can't really get too upset on Nusa because I can't really guarantee him what he wants. Yeah? So, so to finish, the attack is a big problem for Spurs. It's a big problem for Spurs. And I can see why a lot of Spurs fans wanted that Nusa kid. I've barely watched him play, but just looking at his compilations, that's someone who's actually got skill, who wants to take on these players. I saw something about how he was in the 19, 19, on FB ref 99th percentile for, progress, for, for take ons. Spurs don't have many players in this team that want to take on their players. I've been saying with Neto, I've been screaming Neto all summer. Neto, Eze, Elise, guys like Kubo who play for Real Sociedad. People are talking to me about this, Mati this Argentinian kid, Matthias Sula. I've never watched him, but I need to do some research on him, right? Guys like Nico Williams, wingers who are, who've got the pace, who've got the ability to dribble at their, their opponents, who can be a consistent threat, right? And they may not make 10 out of 10 decisions every time, but they're responsible. They're measured in their decision making. It's not just off the cuff every time, right? When I look at our attack now, 
We don't really have that many attackers whose game's based off individuality. We don't really have that many attackers who make the right decisions when they're in the final third, right? We don't really have that many attackers who have high scoring potential, right? These are the three key components that Spurs need to be looking at when they are scouting and assessing players and their suitability for Spurs. If they don't tick these three boxes, don't sign them. Honestly, don't sign them. Don't sign them, right? That's my view on it anyway. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it is not impossible. If you're willing to spend, if you know the attributes you required, and most importantly, if you don't settle for mediocrity. If you don't settle for mediocrity, then you'll get yourselves an improvement on what you have now. Then you'll get yourselves an improvement on Johnson, an improvement on Werner, an improvement on Solomon, an improvement on Richarlison. You will. Because I'm looking at it now, the three attacking signings we've made under the Ange era, they're stinky. I'll be real. Johnson's mid, Werner's not good enough, Solomon, not good enough either. They're, they're, they're mid players. These are mid pack players, bro. They're not going to elevate Tottenham's attack. So we need to do something about that um, in the summer. Or you can do something about that in January with a view to come in in the summer. It's up to Spurs. Anyway, people, that's it from me. Let me know your thoughts on our attackers. Let me know your thoughts on Nusa. Just let me know your thoughts on everything I've mentioned in this video. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Keep your post notifications turned on. And I will be back uh, on Wednesday with a post-match reaction for Brentford. Take care, people. Bless up and up the spurs.